Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. The world has no shortage of crazy people. An interesting thing I've noticed over the years is scientists seem to be overrepresented in the eccentric category. I've definitely observed a few of these characters over the years in the labs where I've worked. And to be honest, even your intrepid host has had his moments of getting a bit carried away. The idea of a mad scientist isn't just a trope or story device. There's something to it. There are real and spectacular examples throughout history. Some of these wild physicists, chemists, engineers, and inventors steered the course of civilization through technology, medicine, and advances in warfare. Movies, books, legends are just filled to the brim with the mad scientist character. A recent survey of 1,000 horror films distributed in the UK between 1930 and 1980 determined mad scientists have been the villains in 30% of the movies. And they've only been the heroes of 11%. That doesn't seem very fair and balanced. So why is this? Why is this archetype so common in the real world and in the public imagination, across history and culture? I think it might be because the scientist is straddling the world of the real and the world of the fantastic. They're supposed to be at the edge of what's possible and impossible. It can make you a little crazy. I think scientists have much more in common with artists than most people realize. A good example of this, the quintessential heroic mad scientist Nikola Tesla. His ideas were the basis for the modern technological world of electricity and wireless information. One man's brain was largely responsible for turning on the lights around the world. As exceptional as he was, he had a lot of trouble managing his life and personal affairs. Barracudas like Thomas Edison were able to manipulate and take advantage of him and eventually steal his intellectual property. Jack Parsons, subject of my recent three-part podcast, sets the standard for real-world mad scientist. His true story seems conjured from the weirdest imagination, but it's been well-documented as authentic. A self-taught master engineer with more than his fair share of crazy, he even hung out with L. Ron Hubbard. Parsons managed to revolutionize rocket propulsion by building prototypes in his garage. He eventually founded and shaped the early development of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. On the dark side, there's the CIA's chief poison expert and mind control chemical chef, Sidney Gottlieb. In Russia, Ilya Ivanov was obsessed with creating human-animal hybrids. Also in Russia, coincidentally, Vladimir Demikhov spent the taxpayer's dollars in a frantic quest to create a two-headed dog. He was a respected transplant doctor before that became his only goal in life. I wonder, are these people born crazy? Or does their eccentricity and at times insanity develop over the course of their lives? The prototypical fictional mad scientist, Dr. Victor Frankenstein, creator of his destructive but lovable monster, made his first appearance in 1818 in the novel Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus by Mary Shelley. Dr. Frankenstein conducted experiments that crossed boundaries that ought not be crossed, with some noteworthy results. In the book, Dr. Frankenstein was trained as both an alchemist and a modern scientist, bringing together rationality and mysticism. A heroic scientist who certainly had a touch of madness behind the genius, Marie Curie. She's in the special class of scientists whose experiments ended up killing them. John Lilly was a Caltech and University of Pennsylvania trained doctor who probed the murkiest waters of the psychedelic experience. He was the inspiration for Dade Harkinrider in my book Anne Marie's Asylum. Lilly was a genius who crossed over the edge more than once. He also wore a raccoon hat nearly better than Davy Crockett himself. I did an episode on John Lilly a while back 
called No Experiment is a Failure. I really wish I could have had the chance to interview him. On the dark side, historical accounts of the rise and reign of chemist Sidney Gottlieb seem like deep YouTube conspiracy theory. This trusted government official, a scientist, was drugging unwitting subjects, civilians, even his own co-workers with LSD and a whole host of other drugs. In my opinion, this was one of the most bizarre and important tales from American Cold War history. Dr. Jose Delgado was a professor of physiology at Yale University who was famous for his attempts to develop methods of mind control through electrical stimulation of the brain. To conduct this research, Delgado invented a device called the Stimosiever. This thing was implanted in the head of a test subject and acted as a wireless brain stimulator. Delgado conducted his first tests on cats, but later moved on to monkeys and eventually humans. The worst of the real world mad scientists, Nazi doctor Joseph Mengele, was also the subject of an interesting novel called The Boys from Brazil by Ira Levin. The book tells the story of Mengele in hiding after the war, but he's planning a comeback. The plot is he's heading a secret project to genetically reincarnate Hitler. The most frightening part about his plan to bring back the Nazi Fuhrer is the degree of scientific rigor in the biology and psychology underlying the guy's plan. This book is one of the darkest portrayals of what can happen when science is divorced from ethics. Margaret Atwood's 2003 novel, Oryx and Crake, shows just how much damage one mad scientist can do. Crake is a genius by every measure, excelling in math, science, and engineering, but he has a very troubled soul. He creates technology that destroys civilization, basically because of a big ego and a broken heart. Doc Emmett Brown wasn't perfect. He did steal plutonium from the Libyans, but he really needed that plutonium to power his flux capacitor-based time machine car. Besides being a mad scientist with the perfect haircut for the role, he proved to be a very ethical man, an above average dancer, and a good friend and husband. Mad scientists can be fascinating characters. U.S. Director of Weapons Research and advisor to the President on Nuclear Matters, Dr. Strangelove, managed to achieve his professional position despite being in a wheelchair and having an arm with rumored Nazi affiliations. Dr. Evil was definitely mad, but I've never been clear on his scientific credentials. I was also never that impressed with his shark-based laser system. Dr. Mindbender from G.I. Joe went from mild-mannered orthodontist to chief technical officer for COBRA. He had quite a breadth of knowledge, from mind control techniques to dentistry to cloning, all the way to cybernetics. Egon Spengler, like spores, molds, and fungus, in addition to hunting ghosts and studying the paranormal. I don't think you can really call him a mad scientist, though. He's really a pretty straight-laced guy, just in an unconventional field. History is reflected in myth and legend, or sometimes it seems like it's the other way around. In modern times, the collective imagination processes reality through movies, music, and literature. The mad scientist just keeps appearing. This character, this archetype, is deep and pervasive. From Frankenstein to Tesla, from fiction to historical reality, the mad scientist is with us. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.